If we look at my website, we see a lot of symbols beside these elements, like an open folder, a tag, a calendar, a word bubble. And these aren't PNGs or JPEGs. These aren't actually images. They're font icons, also known as glyph icons. So if I inspect element, we see that this folder is actually from the font family font awesome and it's 14 pixels big and because it's a font I can up the size or I can lower the size also because the font I could change the color so if I hover over this mouse that hover over this calendar rather with my mouse you see it turns green just like the rest of the text does because as a glyph icon a font icon it can take on the same CSS properties as, a, as font now, if you're not familiar uh, with font icons, some of the more popular ones are Font Awesome, which is the first one that I found about, and it has a huge library, well, 479 uh, icons, and you can find font icon libraries out there that are in the thousands, but this one's fairly popular. Uh, file types, spinner icons, which is new, that's one thing I like about Font Awesome, they keep adding new stuff, payments, charts, currency, uh, if you're using foundation, uh, from Zurb, they have their own set. Uh, Bootstrap has glyph icons, but there's also so many libraries to be found on the internet. But if you've been searching the internet and you haven't found the icon that you're looking for, or you just want to use your own icons, that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, how to make your own icons in a vector-based program and turn them into a font that you can be used on your website. So we're going to go to a vector-based program. I'm going to use Illustrator. And for our example, we're going to use a tooth. So here's a tooth that my colleague made, and I'm going to turn this into an SVG file, which can then be turned into a font. Uh, you can just use SVG files on your website instead of turning them into fonts, but we're going to focus on SVGs into fonts in this video. So I have a tooth, and I could say file, save as, save as an SVG. Um, now you can't say export, you have to say save, save as an illustrator. And I'm going to save this as not family, but tooth. Uh, before I get to that though, we're gonna do a little bit of editing. Uh, so here it's on the artboard, it's touching the top and the bottom, but I want to tighten up the sides. There, are, there is a real case where you'd want to have the, set the space on the sides independent of the CSS on your sheet, uh, CSS on your website, like you could add padding, but maybe you want to have certain padding on your, on your font. That's cool, I don't want it, so I'm making it a lot tighter. I can say file, save as, SVG, save it as tooth to my desktop. And I want it to be nice and small. Uh, this might just be closed with the advanced options, but I don't need preserve Illustrator editing capabilities. I also want to make sure these are all unchecked. Like I don't need to include the slicing data. I don't need to include XMP. I'm gonna keep output fewer T span elements and I'm going to keep responsive checked. This isn't an option in earlier versions of Illustrator, but don't worry, it's not critical for this to work. So there we go. I'm going to say OK. Let's take a look at the desktop. Oops. And there's my Tooth SVG. If we open it with a uh, line editor, I use Espresso. It's a bunch of numbers, which is cool in itself, but we don't want those numbers for this example. We're going to do something else with them. Now, also on my website, you see that I have the folder icon, but I also have this version, which also what's called is an open icon or a hollow or a line art line art icon. I'm gonna make one of those. So going to this, what I could do is I could make a copy of this tooth, uh, a white one, put it over top of it, use Pathfinder to exclude the shape, but it doesn't need to be that complicated. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say copy, then I'm gonna say Command F to paste in front. And with this one, I'm going to give it a stroke. Let's give a stroke of two. I have this cool salmon color. And this is what I would have done on the other one as well, is I'm going to say file and ex ooh, no object expand. Fill and stroke sounds great. So now I have this compound path. I only want this one. I'm going to call this one tooth open. I'm going to delete this extra one I don't need. Take this out of the layer, and I'm going to turn, put it back to its black color. So there I have my uh, full tooth. There I have my open tooth, and I'm going to say, oh, I already expanded it, so we can snap it to the size of the artboard, so they're the same size, just like I did with the other one. File, save as SV tooth open. I don't want to overwrite it. 
SVG, these are all unclicked. Okay, let's take a look at the desktop. There's my tooth, there's my tooth open. I'm ready to turn these into a font, part of a font family. I'm going to go to a website called Ico Moon. Oops. So Ico Moon, custom built and crisp icon fonts done right. Sounds exactly what we want. I already have a profile, so you're gonna need a profile made or you're gonna to want to. And launch the Ico Moon app. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a project. So let's make one called Dentistry, because I'm talking about teeth. And we're gonna load this project. Uh, before I get further into it, I was talking about uh, Font Awesome, Bootstrap, but there's so many other libraries. Well, here we see what libraries just come with Ico Moon. Ico Moon, I don't know. Um, no, it's Ico Moon because there is this font called Ico Ico. I could add this, and now I have option. Now I have access to all these fonts, and one that I really like the look of because I love very thin lines is elegant themes and I could add this and I could pick and choose whatever icons I want. It's very cool. In this project though, I'm going to say remove set, remove set. In this dentistry project, I'm going to import my own. So here I have the desktop, tooth open, tooth, import those. This is an untitled set. Let's fix that. Uh, metadata. And we're going to call, ooh, edit, edit, edit metadata. Let's call it the name of uh, our client who we'll say is PJF Dentistry. Uh, I'm the designer. This isn't totally important. So PJF Dentistry, great. Let's go make a font. Uh, you could click download right now, but I really recommend you do a bit more customizing. Up in preferences, first thing, change the font name. Uh, you don't want it to be uh, Eco Moon because you're gonna have a whole bunch of fonts called Eco Moon. Let's give it the name of our client. And the other thing is I really recommend you change the class prefix. So the class prefix is icon. Makes a lot of sense. We're working with icons, but there's a high chance that you're going to use a CSS library or JavaScript library, or you're gonna download another font that uses the same class prefix. And because icon is so such a generic title, it's likely someone else is using it and you might get unintended behavior, unintentional behavior with your JavaScript CSS files. So let's give it something a little more uh, specialized. So PJF is going to be our, our class prefix, part of the name of the client. Makes a lot of sense. Now I'm going to download this. So PJF Dentistry. Let's bring this to our desktop. Open it up and find out what's inside of it. I have a style sheet and I have a fonts directory and that's what I'm most interested in. Let's open up the style sheet. Here we have our font family PJF dentistry. Well, that's embarrassing. I did not even include the fonts. Let's go back. Selection. You know what? Everyone makes mistakes. This is a great learning opportunity for everyone involved. Make sure your preferences are the same. No, I do not want it to be icon. PJF, that's good. Download that. This is the one I want. Put this on the desktop. Yeah, replace it. I don't want to be. There it is. Okay, compare and contrast. This is what we want. Right there. So there's a class prefix I was talking about, PJF. So tooth open, tooth, and there is a font family called PJF Dentistry that's at this location inside the fonts directory. Let's take a look at that directory. As promised, there it is. There's SVG, but more importantly, uh, TTF and the wolf file. Perfect. Let's get these on our server. So uh, here is my project. I'm using SAS, so SASE style sheets. If you're not familiar, that's where the SCSS is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this style sheet in, but I'm not going to call it style because I already have a style CSS. I'm going to call it custom font. And if I use any other custom fonts, I'll just keep adding it to this. I'm going to drop it in the CSS directory. I'm also going to drop all these fonts that references in there. 
And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change what's written in this file because I have this in a CSS directory. And don't be afraid to change these things. That's what they're there for, to customize your needs. Boom. Save that. Oops. Make sure I'm using SAS. Save that. And I'm going to be sure to import that in my minified style sheet. Again, this is only because I'm using uh, sassy style sheets. If you're not using sassy style sheets, don't worry, this will work. All right, successful prepo tells me I'm a great success. We can keep moving. I'm going to upload the style sheet to my server. I'm going to make sure that I publish these, that I push these to my server. Come on, little wheel. Perfect. Now, I have this test page uh, in draft. I have lorem ipsum, and I want to put a tooth right beside this H2. So let's go into, I'm using WordPress, and we are going to use an I element. And I only use an I element because the conventional wisdom of the internet is to use an I element. Uh, PJF uh, tooth. And we are going to save that draft. And if all goes well, it, I will see a tooth. I see a tooth, but I wanted this tooth right beside this H2 element. And I want it to be just as big as that. So let's take a look. The reason being, my I tag is outside of my H2. And as I said, it's a font. It's going to take on the properties, uh, the same CSS properties of all the other text which, which, that would be applied, meaning this is going to be a font inside an H2. So it's going to take on all the same CSS as everything else in that H2. Save this draft. Refresh this. Boom, there's my nice bold tooth. And super simple, I'm going to, let's say, change this to tooth open. And why can I do that? Because it's right down there, tooth open right up here. Save this draft. Refresh this. Ta-da. So that's how you can make your own font icons, turn them SVG, and I really recommend you use Ico Moon. Uh, if that was all the information you needed, you can stop watching the video now. What I'm going to show is how you can just add font icons to an already existing font family. So you might have seen it before, but I also have this icon called family that my colleague made. Well, I want to add family and I want it to be the same uh, height. That's, mo that's more important to me than everything being the same width. So let's go grab our artboard, stretch it out. Perfect. File. Save as. And call this family. Save that SVG. Great. Oops. There's family. Let's go back to Ico Moon. And I'm going to go back to selection and I'm going to say import to set. Family. I will not forget to add it to this selection this time. Go back to font. This is awesome. That's all the same information I want. We're going to download this. And just like we did before, I'm going to pretend this never happened. Uh, where is he? There he is. And just to make sure everything's as it should be, here's my style sheet. There we go. Everything's the same information, except now I have a family. And this is how easy it is. I don't need to copy all that. I only want this. This is the only thing that's changed uh, in this file, at least that I'm interested in. So copying that, going back to my file that's on the server, saving that. Now also what's changed is the information that's in the font family directory. So let's grab all of this um, and put it in our fonts directory. This is saying these things are exist. Yeah, replace everything publish this back, overwrite what's on the server, um, and overwrite the style sheet. Come on, little wheel, there we go. So if I did everything correctly, 
I should now be able to, well, we'll just copy this. Should now be able to use my family icon. Save the draft. Let's take a look, refresh this. There it is, it's the same height. It's lined up at the baseline. That's awesome, I'm super happy with this. And I could keep going and let's say finally I want to go back to selection. I, now I want to add the steady set and I only want this sun for some reason. And this sun and this garbage bin are really important to me. So, you see that's selected, that's selected, these are selected, this is my new selection. It would continue on like that. So that's everything I want to say in this video. I am going to compare Ico Moon to another service called Fantastic, but this video is getting a bit long, so I'm going to end it now. So if you have any questions, write them to me, please, in the comment section or on my blog, NathanPGF.com. And that's it for now.